All right, guys, today we're gonna look at the LNC 2000. We're gonna look at how I set it up. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest, I suck at wiring. I hate wiring, I'm colorblind, so maybe that's why. But uh, even I didn't find it that difficult. So uh, today we're just gonna go through a quick and easy walkthrough. It may not be that official, but uh, it should get the job done for you. So right away, when we look at the box right here, we can see it gives us a simple wiring diagram. You have the wiring, these two, you can do either or, and this will be for the RPM function. And these two, again, you can do either or, that'll be for the timing retard function. So do not do both. There are some situations where I think you can do both, but you'll have to take a look at the diagram um, that uh, Lingenfelter to provide you. But uh, for most applications, I would say you can just use a single one uh, of either or. So for my application, I chose to go with 12 volt source for both. And so as you can see by this diagram, uh, I would have used the yellow and did use the yellow and the orange wire. So from here, I'll just give you a quick, simple breakdown of how I set it up. Again, here's the box right here. Now you're gonna have uh, some wiring and it's gonna split up into two. Part of that wiring is gonna go, is gonna connect right to your coil packs and then the other spot is gonna connect directly to your wiring harness. So in other words, the Lingen filter is being connected in between where your wiring harness would connect directly to your coil packs. And I'll show you that in a second here. Uh, on the other side of the wiring, we have the, uh, the uh, yellow and the orange wire, as I mentioned earlier. And again, these will be the power wires <clears throat> for the retard function and the rev limiter function. Basically what I did, is I ran those all the way up to, for me, a toggle switch. Now you can use a toggle switch, you can use a momentary switch, whatever you prefer. I just chose to use a momentary or a toggle switch. That way I didn't have to hold the button. I could just boom, click it real quick and then click it off. So for that, for those two, I ran the yellow and the orange wire to the positive side of the toggle switch. And for most switches, you're gonna have three little prongs on the end. Um, but for me, I ran it to the positive side for the toggle switch. The negative side, the ground side of this toggle switch, I actually did not use. And for most of you, you will not use it either. So do not use the negative side for most of you. For the ground side of the toggle switch, and most toggle switches or momentary switches will um, indicate somewhere on there which is which. So you don't have to kind of guess what prong is which. But for the ground side, this is where I connected my 12 volt source to on the toggle switch. So I actually retrieved my 12 volt source from my lighter outlet. And so what I did was I disconnected the, um, uh, well not disconnected rather. I took the uh, wiring connecting to the positive side of the lighter outlet and I ran that wire up to my toggle switch. And so from here, Everything ran fine. I haven't had any issues. It's it's very simple. And then the negative side on the lighter outlet, I just have that still connected to another ground area that it, it uses. Now, the only thing I will mention is my toggle switch does not light up. It has a little light when it's on, but that light doesn't actually come on. So I'm thinking maybe I need to ground this, but I don't know 100% sure. Again, I suck at wiring, so I'm not sure. I usually just know when the, when the uh, switch is on when it's off. All right, so from here, we'll look actually at the uh, real world application here. I apologize for the beeping. I have my lights on and so the car's beeping at me. So for this, didn't use any of this stuff right here. I think you can use this stuff if you have like a nitrous application or, um, you know, if you're boosted and you're using a three bar or something like that. I know there's some advanced things you can do with this, but again, I didn't use any of that. We just, I just set up the bare bones set up here so from here um actually we'll take a look at this first so from here you can see this runs all the way up into my coil packs and i apologize it's not the cleanest but it gets the job done so normally where you would have this right here this is your wiring harness um this would connect directly to your coil packs basically the lingen filter it goes in between the wiring harness and your coil packs so you can see these wires run right in between there and that'll be the same for both sides. Let me go around here. Again, runs right in between your coil packs and your wiring harness. So nothing too difficult there. Yeah, and you can't switch these two up either because they only go in one way. So that's fairly easy. 
Now for the 12 um, volt orange and yellow wires, I believe that's these up here. I just had them running right under this little firewall here. And now what I have them doing is they're actually behind um, your, your car's computer. And if you t actually take out the car's computer, it's super simple. I think these are two 10 volts and then a few, and then these are like 12 maybe. You take out the computer, you take out the little um, plastic piece that holds your computer in. You actually see a grommet behind there that goes through the firewall. It's super, super easy to get to. Basically, you'll just sneak the uh, the 12 volt um, orange and yellow wire right through there. And so from there, swing into the car here. Uh, I took out this plastic trim piece right here, super simple. I took out um, this right here, again, super simple, not too difficult. Um, I ran the wires through under here, and then under here. And then this is where my previous lighter outlet was. And so obviously I took that out and I installed my toggle switch. So normally that would be on. And again, that's the light I was talking about that should be on. But uh, again, it doesn't come on for a reason, not too worried. So it's not too difficult to set up again. Um, but from here, I'll give you a, just a little, a little rev and just show you how it functions. And uh, we'll go from there. Oh, also, normally when the car is powered, this light will be on. I can't tell if it's on or not. I don't know if I can't tell. But uh, when the when it's actually activating, this should be turning, I believe, green. I haven't actually looked at this while I'm activating it. But uh, you can use those as indicators to see if it's actually working. And then the last thing I also wanted to point out was um, this right here. Pretty self-explanatory. You can adjust the timing based off of this. This gives you a table of what number a letter does what as far as how many degrees you're retarding the timing. And then here's your limiter function. Um, uh, again, very simple. This is by the thousand. So if you, uh, right now I have it at 30, so that's 3000 RPMs. And then on the hundred side, I have this at five. So in other words, I have my limiter set to 3,500 RPMs. So very self-explanatory. Now, before I give you the quick rev, I did want to mention that a lot of autos, they will grab their 12 volt power source from uh, the brake switch. That way it's only activated when you have your brake switch, um, when there's power going to it. And then for manuals, a lot of them will power it to their, their clutch switch. And so I believe both of those will be under under the dash somewhere. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that they're both, I know the clutch switch is at the very least. So just keep that in mind. For my application, as corny as it is, I just have it strictly for um, shooting flames as of right now. Gonna be selling the car soon anyway. I originally was uh, going to set it up with uh, a nitrous build, but I'm just going to sell it and so right now it just serves essentially no purpose besides being obnoxious which it is all right guys i apologize if it's kind of hard to hear me the car is cammed and the exhaust is fairly loud so what we're going to do here is again the car is in park right now and all i'm going to do hit that switch boom like i said normally that light should come on but it doesn't for whatever reason i don't have the wiring set up i guess and from here literally i'm just going to rev to 3000 rpm or 3500 rpms <laughs> Thank you. 